Good morning, Floss Tube. It is Helen D. Today is Tuesday, September 12th, 2023. Uh, thank you for spending some time with me today to talk all things cross stitch. Welcome back to everyone who tunes in to every video or every regular update, and a big welcome to anyone who is new. Uh, it is another dark, looks like I'm filming in a cave edition of Floss Tube. I just like to make myself look as pale as humanly possible, apparently. <laughs> um, it rained all overnight. I'm really hoping that that breaks. We've been having some heat and humidity, which is very unseasonable for us for September. I'm sweaty. I've been sweaty for a week. Um, we actually had a couple of the elementary schools last week had to close early because of the heat because they don't have air conditioning. That's one thing here in the Northeast is not a lot of buildings have like a central air conditioning. They might have like even us, we don't have air conditioning. We have a couple air conditioning window units, <laughs> but the rest of the house is hot. So we had three elementary schools that had to close early two days because of the heat. Uh, my son high school is air conditioned because it's a new building. The middle school is air conditioned. So they, they were comfortable. So high school's off to a decent start for my son. The first week was rough, <laughs> um, but he settled in. His classes started right in, all of them, with a bunch of homework. So he was feeling very overwhelmed. But then, like I told him, it will settle, right? Not everyone will be having big loads of homework all at the same time. And that's what's happened, right? He had a little here, and then this class didn't have any. And then a little here, and then this class didn't have any. So he's, he's settled in. Math team started yesterday, so he's excited for that. Um, and tennis is year-round, so we always have that. Uh, I've been busy making videos. <laughs> I did two extra videos since I saw you last. I put out a video unboxing my fall finishes, which I did get my fall stuff up. Um, and then I put one out getting my perforated paper ready for the Freaky Fair Isle Sal, which starts today. Hopefully I get a chance to start that before tonight. <laughs> we'll see. I don't think I can work on the dark perforated paper at tennis. That would be asking for trouble. So I hope you're not tired of seeing my face, my sweaty, pale face. <laughs> um, Halloween video hasn't come out yet. I haven't even, that stuff, the box is down from its shelf, but I haven't gotten anything out. I have bare areas in the other room waiting to be decorated that it'll happen when it happens. Um, so what have I been up to since my last video, my last update? I fully finished some things. I have one FO, but I was pretty monogamous on that one FO, so that's kind of it. <laughs> so we will jump in and start with fully finishes. The first one is one for my sister. She stitched this, I believe it was last year. This is a hands-on design and it was a stitch along, and I believe you can get this as a PDF from Kathy Haberman's hands-on design website. I think there was, there was something else here instead of a button. A skull, I'm not sure, but Donna put this cute frog on it. I used, I told her, I kind of want to keep this for myself. I had this, I've had this fabric forever and never had anything that it quite matched, but it matches this, it matches her greens. And then I had just the right color of purple it was chenille, so I sewed that on. Um, so this one is ready to go back to her the next time I see her. Then, one of my pieces that I did finish, so this is was an FO and now it's an FFO, is pumpkin rope. Still got fuzz on it. So this is a brand new chart from October House Fiber Arts. It's called Pumpkin Row. And I made mine into a little drum um, with a herringbone stitch. I stitched this on a scrap of Ada. Um, I think it was fog. Picture this plus fog. And I think it was a 16 count to kind of show you how big it is. I know that this is like two and three quarter inches, this circle, because I just did it yesterday. And yes, when I did it, I filmed a tutorial. <laughs> because I did this one and I did this one. 
I stitched this a while ago. This is from Friend Stitch last year. They had a Christmas Friend Stitch, so this is unavailable. Um, it was part of a larger chart. So this one I stitched and then did the drum with the fabric sides, also the herringbone. It also still has fiber fill peeking out. So the tutorial that I did, um, it's long. <laughs> it's like an hour long. But I show how to do them both ways, how to figure out your measuring for if you have fabric to go on the top of a drum or fabric to go on the sides of a drum. So it's a twofer. <laughs> Um, I need to finish editing and all that. I would look for that next Tuesday. That's my plan, is to upload that next Tuesday. Um, but both of these are done. So those are fully finishes. And then finally, when I recorded my kind of fall stuff unboxing, I had a chart in there that when I pulled it out of finish, I was like, I'd really like to read, I think I want to redo this. It was. Um, had a big ruffle on it. I had a stand that it stuck to, but it constantly fell off. So it just was more than my style is now. I've taken a few things that I finished early on with bows and flowers and all that and ruffles and, and lessened them, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like I now prefer kind of a cleaner, simpler finish. So I said, oh, I'd like to redo that one. And it was this one, Dear Friends. So I took it down, actually the night I recorded that, I came downstairs, I had it set out, pulled it down, <laughs> took it apart, um, you know, got, it had hot glue on it and all that, I got that cleaned off as best I could, and then I was gonna, I took it upstairs to measure it, to see about ordering a frame the next time pictureframes.com had a sale, which actually they had had one that weekend, it was Labor Day weekend. And I went in my closet, and lo and behold, I had this. This was an oops frame from Michaels. Um, I haven't even put a thing on it. Like this is how it came. So it's, it's a little tight on the sides. It's tighter on the sides than it is in the top and bottom, but it was like perfect. There was no need to order a frame. I had this one and the color matches. Um, so done. That I got it done that night. I pinned it up and now it's good to go. So that was my FFO redo. Um, there's one in my Halloween box too that I'm considering re-FFOing. So we'll see when the time comes. So those are all of my fully finishes. So finished objects, like I said, I had finished Pumpkin Row. I took that one to tennis and kind of, I wanted to get that done so that I could get that tutorial done. So that one's done. The other fully, or not fully, finish that I have is I finished Halloween Night. So this is by Autumn Lane Stitchery. It's called Halloween Night. I stitched it on 14 count light lavender from To Die For Fabrics on Etsy. This is the one that I'm putting in that mirror frame with the bats on it <laughs> from Joann's. And I've seen even more people finish theirs. And every time I see them, I'm like, ugh, is mine done yet? <laughs> so mine is done. Um, I've also seen people use that frame for the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery had a year long wreath a halloween wreath stitch along that just ended and that one fits in there too i think i think that one only fits in there on a 16 count so this one is on a 14 count i didn't want to do it on a 25 count because i'd had to use three strands especially the black and i didn't want to deal with it so on the 14 count it's a little over nine inches the frame opening is like 12 inches so i'm thinking I'm going to have to mount this on some fabric to then fill the frame because I think it would be a little lost. And that's what I've seen most other people do too. Although um, I had another viewer who emailed me and she did hers on, I think she said it was 22 count over two and it, fit, it fills her frame perfectly. <laughs> so that's my plan for this. Sooner rather than later. It, would anyone like, a finish with me video when I do that. 
Is that something that you'd like to see that or you already know how to do that? I don't know. <laughs> I thought I'd ask, I'm throwing it out there. Um, and I don't know when I will get to that, but soon, because I want to pull my Halloween stuff out. So that was my one finished object. So because I worked on that one so much, <laughs> I didn't get much else done. Uh, I did work on Harvest Texies. Hold on, it's another bag in here. This is a chart that was part of a kit from Hands On Design, um, a club kit that hasn't been released yet, just to the, to the masses. And I'm doing this all in a row so that I can make a drum, which is what Nicole Buckeye Stitcher did. She was the first one I saw do that. I've been working on this at tennis and it's pretty pitiful. <laughs> That's as far as I've gotten. This section, this hexi is done. And then I barely started the next. So this one will not get done for this fall. And actually I'm thinking this might get tucked away and just be a carryover whip because I need to get working on some ornaments. I have a list and I need to make some, I need to start crossing them off. <laughs> um, and those are good to work on at tennis because they're usually in my six by six hoop um, and they're a little easier of a chart to go by. So that one may get tucked away so I can work on some ornaments. The other whip that I worked on was a new start and it was for our hashtag Nora Corbett witch along. I started Eva. So that's what she'll look like. I started in the center, so I'm kind of this little section of her dress. And again, I didn't get an overly large amount of this done. <laughs> I'm also finding that this fabric, because it's darker, I have a harder time at night, unless I have all the lights on. Um, so that's, I love the colors. So this fabric is Night Sky Brandy by Mystic Fabrics. Mine is a 28 count Lucana. So that's gonna look great. I have seen other people already finish. <laughs> um, and, and she's not huge, but like I said, I really wanted to finish Halloween night. Now I think I'll focus on her for a bit and see how far I can get. Let's talk, let's talk hashtags for a second. What is going on with Instagram and their hashtags? <laughs> it used to be that when you used a hashtag and you clicked on it to see who else posted, you could sort by recent, so you could see everyone's stuff. And that feature is now gone on my phone. Is that gone for everyone? Does anyone know how to get that back? Because I know I'm missing people's posts because now when I click on it, all it shows me is what they've deemed like the top posts or the recent top posts. They're all the same. And you know, it's like 20 pictures and that's all I can see. The reason we wanna use a hashtag is so we can see each other's work. <laughs> so if I've missed commenting or liking or seeing your picture, it's cause I haven't seen it. <laughs> um, that said, please feel free to tag me if you are posting so that I will see it. Um, I am eastcoast.crafter on Instagram because I wanna see everyone's witches and what fabric they used and what color changes they did and I'm not seeing it. And it's frustrating. And then we started another sale today <laughs> and I won't be able to see those either. So today starts the Freaky Fair Isle Stitch Along. This is a chart by Barbie of Petal Pusher and I'm putting on this cell with Carla at Cobweb Corner. She does still have charts. If you wanna join in last minute, she has PDFs, which are like immediate. Um, she has floss. She still has a little of the perforated paper. Um, you can also do it on fabric. This will be a quick stitch. A couple people actually said they already started it and finished it. <laughs> so I did the video um, of prepping my perforated paper, and I'm trying this method. I've never done this method before, but it's where you sew fabric strips so that you can then use a frame or a Q-snap 
um, to hold your perforated paper. I've never tried this before, so I thought this would be a good time. Um, I had a few people ask, how did I get this size? <laughs> I have a, a whole drawer of mystery Q-snap parts. <laughs> Do we all have that? It's like Frankenstein's lab in my drawer of Q-snaps that I've taken apart to put in other sizes, and now I don't know how they go back originally. So this Q-snap, <laughs> The sides are a six inch Q-snap, and then the top and bottom look to me to be an eight inch Q-snap. And then right here, I don't know how well it shows, there is a three inch extender piece that you can get. I got these at 123 Stitch, and they're, they're really cheap. They're like $1.50 for one. So if you want to extend your Q-snap, you do need too. Um, so that's how I got this particular size. I have another one that I like to use for um, berries and stuff that is a six inch Q-snap and then on one of the sides I use that extender so that basically makes it a six by nine on the outside right it's smaller on the inside. So I'm ready to go for Freaky Farrell hopefully this afternoon. Um, we'll see. All that's left is purchases and giveaways. This is a quick video because when you only stitch on basically one thing, it doesn't take long. Uh, I needed to get some floss away bags. I was putting away flosses and I was almost out of bags, so I'm like, I better grab them now. When I got those, I also picked up the Christmas ornaments issue. And there's a few flip throughs on this. Um, C Zook Stitch has a great flip through, flip through where she shows all the things. They don't have them on the back cover anymore. They do have them on the inside, but she has a great flip through if you want to see. There's some cute things. There's a couple in here I definitely want to do. I, I always get these because even if nothing catches my eye this year, I might flip back through it again in three years and be like, well, why didn't I stitch that? That's super cute. So I like having this issue to hold on to. Crinkles. I also placed a fabric order with um, Dying for Cross Stitch, which I, I always try and link on my shops and stuff below. She has, her name is Kathy, and she has fabric of the month that she'll post and then you order and it's at a discount. Like it's not a subscription, it's just here's this month's color. Um, the ones I got were not the color of the month, but she had a couple of new, she had a new color. And then one of these, I don't know if it was new, but I hadn't seen it before. So the one I hadn't seen before is called, oh, here's her, here's her tag. Uh, this is called Crushed Blueberries. And it looks like crushed blueberries. Actually, this is Crushed Blueberries Medium because sometimes she'll dye things a light, a medium, and a dark. Um, it'll be hard to show this, so. This is a 14 count Ada. Um, a lot of hers, like this is, does it say the dimensions? 18 by 29. So it's longer than your typical fat quarter, just because of, and different ones are different because sometimes when you're buying fabric as a dyer on the bolt, they're different sizes, right? Your, your 14 count Ada might come so that it's easier to just cut it in this size and you don't have any waste versus your Luganas might come a little wider. So this one happens to be 18 by 29 crushed blueberries. And then her new color is called Murky Waters. This one's 18 by 27. So again, it's just that particular fabric. Let me fold this one this way, it might be easier. This one is gorgeous. This one I got a 28 count Lugano because I thought it would be mermaid colors or witch colors. This is, this is Mira slash Nora Corbett <laughs> colors. The crushed blueberries is too, but this one definitely. It really looks like murky water. So those are my two fabrics. And they came really quick for, for not being pre-dyed, for being a dye to order. I had them within two weeks, which was shocking. <laughs> Um, 
that's it. That's it, except giveaways. So giveaways, we have a last call for um, Mar, Mar Lily Furlich. She had won Autumn Dream, so last call. Uh, the first two we have here were last videos, less regular updates, giveaways, and they were donated by Carla at Cobweb Corner. Halloween Cat goes to Leone Ryan. My Halloween cat is in my box. I haven't pulled it out. And Halloween at Hollyberry Farm is Pam Miller. And then we had three charts that were sent to me by Robin of October House Fiber Arts, and these are her new designs, um, which should be hitting shops because they came out right around Needlework Expo, so they should be hitting shops. So we have two copies of Pumpkin Fair. I had it written down as Pumpkin Row because that's what I've been working on. Uh, Kim Smith, S-M-I-T, and Cindy Zamzow, Pumpkin Fair. I'm planning on starting my pumpkin fair on October 1st, and I will be using hashtag pumpkin fair sal and October house fair sal. And hopefully I can figure out how to see everyone's. And then coffee and pumpkin pie is Wendy Sane, S-A-I-N. So that is the ones I pulled for. Um, I have some for this video. The first two, as always, are from Carla at Cobweb Corner. I will always link her floss tube down below and her website. She's been putting out, she has two now. She's gone through and pulled 31 Halloween charts, and some of them are ones you may not have seen, just to kind of give you some ideas if you're looking for something different for Halloween. And she's put out two of those. So there's two different ones if you want to see them. So for giveaways, you have to be 18 so you can legally give me your address. Please don't say giveaway or win. Um, I'd appreciate if you're a subscriber and go give Carla a subscribe as well. Just use the numerical number in your comment for any that you're looking to enter. Number one, Witchy Me by Lucy Beam. I think that's a really sweet witch. And the border is fun. That's a really cute chart, Witchy Me. Number two, this is an older one, I say that. It might not be. I can't see a date. Praise for these stitches. This is trick or treat. I like the frame with the words around the frame. So this is number two, trick or treat. And then I have a couple. Um, I've had some generous folks send in charts for giveaways, so I pulled a couple from there as well. Number three is Let's Talk Autumn. This is hands-on design. I really need to get this one done because I have a frame that those fit in, but hasn't happened yet. And number four is Spooky Countdown from the Primitive Hair. So that's number four. I've seen before too, like, just these little boots done as a chart. And you know, these are great for kind of little, little tiny smalls if you're looking for something like that. So that is number four. That's it. <laughs> this will be a quick one. Plans, like I said, Freaky Farewell starts today. I'm looking to um, start October, uh, October Fair, Pumpkin Fair, <laughs> October 1st. Although I'll be back before October 1st. Work on Eva, and I'm really itching for a new start. This is the time of year that I really, I just want to start things. And I want to start all the autumn things. And I don't have any autumn things going besides the harvest hexes. Um, don't be surprised if I've started a tiny town by the next video. I have them kitted. Honestly, that if I finished Freaky Feral, I could use this Q-snap and it'd be perfect. So maybe that will be my motivation to whip that one up so that I can um, use that Q-snap and start one of the tiny towns. I have Autumn and Halloween both kitted up, ready to go. Maybe I'll start both. <laughs> That's it. I hope everyone has a good couple of weeks. 
Uh, look for the drum tutorial next week. And I should be back with a regular video in a couple of weeks. So thank you guys. Bye.